Hey, this is Professor Perez from Saddleback College. Today, we're going to work on reducing fractions. And of course, we got to get out our student of the semester, and that's Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, you ready to go? Yeah. Today, we're doing reducing fractions. Uh huh. When am I going to use this in real life? You know, that's the first time I've ever been asked that question. Yeah, right. Anyway, you'll be using this stuff on the next exam and the final exam. And if you don't want to learn it now, you can always come back and learn it next semester. Uh -huh. All right, let's get ready to go right there. Okay, today we're going to reduce fractions. Now, in our introduction to fractions videos, we were changing denominators to become the lowest common denominators by multiplying the top and the bottom by numbers. In this video, when we reduce, you're going to see we're going to divide the top and bottom by the same number. So you'll see what we're going right here. Let's bring out some number lines. Okay, 4, 6, Charlie, right there. Now look at the number line there. Now 4, 6 is the same, same as what other fraction? 2 thirds. 2 thirds, that's right. It can be reduced. Now here's how we do it, Charlie. We're going to take 4, 6 and we're going to divide the top and the bottom by the same number. Now, Charlie, what number divides evenly into a 4 and a 6? 2. A 2, that's right. So we'll divide the top and the bottom by 2. Now, we can also write this down in this form. Without using the division symbol, we'll use this little bar and say 4 divided by 2 and 6 divided by 2. Okay, Charlie, what's 4 divided by 2? 2. That's right. And what's 6 divided by 2? 3. Very nice there, Charlie. So our fraction was now reduced from 4 sixths to 2 thirds. There you go. Notice here we divided top and bottom by the same number. Okay, let's do another one. Here we go, Charlie. Now we have 9 six. Okay, Let's look at our number lines here. Now notice 9 six, Charlie. That reduces to what? 3 halves. 3 halves. Now, Charlie, what number divides evenly into a 9 and a 6? 3. It's a 3. So we'll divide top and bottom by 3. Or we can write it in this form, right there. And now, Charlie, what's 9 divided by 3? Three? 3. That's right. And what's 6 divided by 3, Charlie? 2. Very nice. And that's our answer, 3 halves. Very nice, there, Charlie. Now let's do another one. 3 halves. Now, Charlie, can 3 halves be reduced? No. No, it can't. There, the only number that divides evenly into a 3 and a 2 is a 1. Therefore, we say it's reduced down to its lowest terms. Now, in the introduction videos, when we were learning how to add and subtract fractions, we had to make the denominators the same, right? And we had to find the lowest common denominator and change our fraction to have that lowest common denominator. Now, Charlie, look at our number line here, and 3 halves can be written as what other fraction? 9, nine six. 6. That's right. We can write it as 9, 6. And so, in this example here, we want to change our denominator to be a 6. That's what we're going to do. Well, how do we do it using arithmetic? Well, that's what we're doing in those last videos. Right, Charlie? Now, Charlie, remember, we're going to change this denominator to be a 6. So we look at our denominator there, which is a 2. Now, what do I multiply 2 by, Charlie, to get a 6? 3. A 3, that's right. But remember, when you multiply the bottom by 3, you must multiply the top by 3, right? OK, Charlie, what's 3 times? Or 2 times 3? 6. 6. Very nice. And the top, 3 times 3 is what? 9. Nine. So here, what we did is we took 3 halves and wrote it with a denominator of 6. Now, watch. In the last problem, we did 9, 6, and we reduced it, right? And so here we go. 9, 6. What number divides evenly into a 9 and a 6, Charlie? 3. A 3, right? And so we divide top and the bottom by 3, and now we're reducing 9, 6 to get what? 3 halves. 3 halves, that's right. So notice here, we divided here by 3, and over there we multiplied by 3, right? There you go. Okay, Charlie, so let's do another one. 18 over 12. Don't get scared. Now let's look at a number line here. Charlie, 18 twelfths can be written as what other fraction? 9, 6. 9, 6, and it also can be written as a 3 halves. 3 halves, that's right. Now, sometimes you can get to the answer in one step. Sometimes you have to take more than one step. 
Now, a lot of times, students find it easy to divide numbers by two. Now, watch, Charlie. We're going to divide top and bottom by two here. And I'm going to help you out. What's 18 divided by two, though? Nine. Nine. And 12 divided by two? Six. Is six. Now, we're not done yet, because remember, nine six can be reduced by dividing top and the bottom by what, Charlie? Three. That's right, by three. And what's nine divided by three, Charlie? Three. And six divided by three? Two. Is two. Now, notice here, we took two steps to go from 18 twelfths all the way down to three halves. But notice, we first divided by two, and then we divided by three. Now, Charlie, can you think about this? What's the largest number that divides evenly into an 18 and a 12? Six. It's a six, that's right. So notice here, if we take 18 divided by six and 12 divided by six, what do we get, Charlie? Three halves. Three halves. Now notice we only took one step. So in the first process, we divided by what, Charlie? A two and a three. Two and a three. And in the second column, we divided straight with a six. And notice here, 2 times 3 is 6, right? So think about that. We divided by 2, divided by 3, and we got 3 halves, and here we divided by 6. All right. Let's do another one, Charlie. 4 twelfths. Now, Charlie, look at the number line. 4 twelfths reduces to what? 2 six or a 1 third. Very nice there. Now, Charlie, I'm going to help you out. First, I'm going to divide by 2, because I'm too chicken, right? Okay, divide top and bottom by 2. And what's 4 divided by 2, Charlie? 2. And 12 divided by 2? 6. Very nice there, but we're not done, because we can again divide by what, Charlie? 2. 2's, and what do we get, Charlie? 1 third. 1 third. Very nice. Now, let's do the same problem again, but we're going to do it in one step. Charlie, what's the largest number that divides evenly into a 4 and a 12? 4. It's a 4, right? And what's 4 divided by 4? 1. And 12 divided by 4? 3 is 3, and we're done, right? So, again, you'd prefer to use the largest number that divides evenly into both the numerator and denominator. So, that's the end of part one of reducing fractions. So, we're going to come back and do part two very soon. So, go take a break, and we'll see you all again soon.